Guys, Carl Raggio here, and today I'm gonna to take you through one of my back workouts. So I can show you exactly the exercises I do, some tips and tricks to get the most out of those exercises, and most importantly, to help you guys get a bigger, stronger back. Let's go. Exercise number one in this sequence is single arm dumbbell row. So I'm gonna do a few warm up sets until I get to my actual working sets. Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I set up, maybe how I use the bench uh, to get a bit more of a stretch in that exercise and really blow up those lats just to get started in this workout. So with the setup on that one, I like to have the bench in front of me or at least something to lean on. So I've got a bit of distance between me and the floor. I wanna keep my torso at about 45 degrees while I'm doing that exercise so I can get a nice big stretch down. I think one of the biggest mistakes I see people doing on that exercise is going way too heavy and maybe jerking the weight around, throwing it up and down or just moving in the wrong direction. So you can probably see when I was doing that exercise, it's almost like a bit of a semicircle or a bit of an arc action. I'm kind of leaning forward as I stretch, squeezing right back and trying to lift that dumbbell past my hips so I get a nice big squeeze in that lat all the way through that end range of motion. So I've got some straps. We're getting into our heavy working sets now. So I get asked a lot about straps, how to use them, why you should use them, what are they good for. So as our working sets start getting heavier on any exercise that grip can become a limiting factor, some of these guys, single loop straps or figure eight straps can be a really good tool in order to use to be able to get, I guess, heavier on certain lifts that, you know, you need grip, right? So dumbbell rows, bent rows, deadlifts, all those types of exercises where your grip might give out before the intended muscle group that you use. So for these ones, single arm dumbbell rows, we're gonna be able to roll a little bit heavier and not lose control of the dumbbells. And because these are the heavy ones, we're getting serious now, the belt's on. you guys through one of my favorite hypertrophy advanced training techniques, double drop set. So I'm on my heaviest set of dumbbell rows. I'm gonna complete eight to 10 reps. I'm gonna drop the load by about 15 to 20%, do another set for about eight to 10 reps, and I'm gonna do that once more. So basically we've got working set, two drops, and they're gonna pretty much be the failure. So this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say you need to be training hard. You gotta push yourself past those boundaries that you've been stuck at, let's have it.
two in this workout, we've got chest supported rows. So after we did the single arm dumbbell rows, we're gonna give the lower back a little bit of a break because those single arm dumbbell rows can be a little bit taxing on that lower, lower back lumbar spine area. So for this one, we're set up on the cable, we've got a bit of a DIY MacGyver situation happening in the studio today. So we've got an incline bench, we've got a low cable pulley, and we're gonna do three sets of eight to 10 reps, getting a big squeeze at the top, and we're getting a nice big stretch all the way down. Let's get in. Tip I give everyone, and especially for me, I feel it feels the best when I'm doing some sort of rowing exercise, especially chest supported rows, is as you stretch forward, you let the scapula roll around the rib cage, so the scapula protracts around the spine, sorry, around the rib cage, and then as you row back, we wanna retract the scapula first, so we're pulling those shoulder blades back together, and then we're extending from the upper spine. So, kinda of getting a two for one, we're getting some rowing action and we're getting some thoracic extension. So we're training the upper back, lats and those spinal erectors as well. So exercise three in this workout, we've done two horizontal pulling exercises. So we're going for a vertical pulling exercise, pronated grip, wide lat pull downs. So these ones we wanna get a nice big stretch at the top, big squeeze at the bottom, gonna aim for around 10 to 12 reps for three working sets, let's go. Most out of that one, we wanna try and get a big stretch in the top position, stretching for about one second, just to get rid of any momentum. And then at the bottom, we're gonna pause for about one second on top of the chest, just to make sure we get a nice big squeeze at the bottom and we're not cheating through those reps. Two exercises in this workout, we're gonna do back to back as a superset. We've got seated narrow grip cable rows for 20 reps. So we're gonna get a nice big pump to finish this workout off. Some high reps, big squeezing. And then our second exercise, we've got dumbbell shrugs. So dumbbell shrugs, we've got a three second ISO hold on each rep, aiming for around 10 to 12 reps. Again, trying to get a lot of blood flow into those traps and get a nice big pump to finish this workout. Let's do it. Mistake I see a lot of guys doing with those dumbbell shrugs. Probably seen them in like a commercial gym or something. Really heavy dumbbells, they'll get the heaviest dumbbell on the rack. 
sitting there looking like a chicken, moving their head up and down and barely moving their shoulders. So the reason we use the three second ISO hold at the top of each rep is it keeps the load light enough that you get a good contraction and there's no momentum. So the pause helps you stay contracted, get a bit more of a pump, get a bit more uh, mind muscle connection, ensuring that you do the exercise properly. And most of all, avoiding injury. Because I think that's probably one of the biggest things I'd see people doing those really heavy shrugs. Down the line, you'll see those guys come back in the gym. Ah, pulled my neck, hurt my neck. Of course you did. We all knew that was gonna happen. So stay light, stay controlled. And if you need to, use that ISO hold as a bit of a buffer in terms of how much load you can use. That's it from me, guys. I've shown you a bunch of exercises that you can utilize in your training program and some cool tips and tricks that you can use to make your training better. So that's it. Make sure you subscribe and like this video and I'll see you guys next time.